Hi, this is Elliot Haspel and welcome to another edition of Best Practices Weekly. Today we're going to be talking about promoting math discussions or math debates in your classroom. And this comes from an article in Teaching Children Mathematics. Two university instructors are talking about this issue of the math debate, the math disagreement. If you're putting a question in front of kids that they're really going to be able to wrestle with and disagree with each other, which can be pretty tough for young kids to do, but if we do it right, it can really, really help them dig into their reasoning, to critical thinking skills, and most importantly, to really gain a conceptual understanding of math. And so, when the others talk about a math debate, this is a question that students are commonly split on. They give the example of, is 4 times 8 the same as 8 times 4? This is something that young students will often have disagreements of. And they talk about a couple of elements to any good math debate in your classroom. The first one is force students, students to take sides. And the best way to do this is by giving them a writing prompt before instruction. So in the above example, you would want to actually give them a writing prompt to start the day of is 4 times 8 the same as 8 times 4 and explain your reasoning. Uh, and then this lets students really think about what is their current thinking about that question. It forces them to take a side on the issue. Then you can also give them the same writing prompt a day later and see if their thinking is advanced. So if they did think that, for example, 4 times 8 was different than 8 times 4, after the lesson you'll be able to see how they actually switch sides on that topic to the one that's actually correct. Uh, it's important then to let students also defend their reasoning. Even if they have the wrong answer to begin with, it's very important that they're able to articulate why they think that is, both, again, to get practice with defending math, but also it's going to give you as the teacher a really strong idea of what is the misconception that these students are having. The second thing is reveal the misunderstandings. So usually when you're going to see a math debate, you're going to have a common misunderstanding that's causing students to go on the wrong side of things. Um, and this goes for any age level of students. And so if you design activities that show students why their answer is wrong, why their side is wrong, they're going to come to it and really understand it a lot better than if you just tell them the right answer. And so. An example that they give is this issue of triangles. So younger students will often try to identify a geometric shape like a triangle, just visually, what looks like a triangle to them. They don't actually think about it that much in terms of the geometric property of this has three sides. So that can be a very common misunderstanding. And so an activity you could do to show them that actually a triangle is a triangle because it has three sides, not because it looks like what you think a triangle looks like, um, is by having them take a look at a whole bunch of different shapes and circle the ones that they think are triangles and then explain in words what makes a triangle a triangle. Uh, by doing this, you'll show students that actually this one, for example, that they might look like a triangle to them just off the top of their heads, actually is not able to be defended when you think about the properties of a triangle. So you can reveal the misunderstanding. Other issues, uh, other sort of visual examples can work for that. They give the example in the article again of students who have trouble with the idea of measurement, giving them a, a sort of broken off ruler, things like that. Things that will show students who have a certain misunderstanding uh, that their side actually cannot be correct. And the third example that they give, or the third element of success that they give here is think about last year's disagreements when you're planning these math debates. So as if you're a veteran teacher, think about in your previous year's teaching, what have been the issues in math that students have really split on, that there's been lots of disagreement on because there's some sort of lingering misunderstanding. If you're a brand new teacher, ask a veteran teacher for this sort of thing. This can really help you proactively get ahead of those disagreements and help students get the concepts. The authors then go on to talk about what makes a good debate topic in math, and so there are three main things. The first is make sure you're focusing on a math concept, not a rule. So something like the steps of long division do not make a good debate because it's a rule. There's no real concept inherent in it, whereas something like is 4 times 8 the same as 8 times 4, there's a concept underlying that, or the triangle issue, what, what actually or the, makes a triangle a triangle. Uh, that's another thing that there's actually a concept underlying it. Second, make sure that the debate is accessible to all students. So there should be a common background knowledge that all students can access uh, before you are engaging with a debate topic. And lastly, make sure it's a debate, the, a topic that can be debated. What that means is it should be something that students can reasonably arrive at several different answers to. So it's reasonable for a young student to think that 4 times 8 is not the same as 8 times 4. 
Uh, but if you were giving them another question where it's very, very obvious what the answer was, then it wouldn't be as much of a debate. And then the authors conclude by talking about the teacher's role here is both in really strategically designing the debates, and then it's important to make sure you're effectively facilitating them. So that means the adjusting. If all the students are all of a sudden very quickly coming to a consensus around the right answer, how can you push them further in their thinking? If there's still a lot of disagreement, what kind of activities further can you bring up or questions can you ask to show the side that's incorrect why they're incorrect? And in the chance that the students are starting to coalesce around the consensus of the wrong answer, what again can you do to pull them back and show them why that's wrong? So again, as the teacher, we have a couple of roles here in these math debates. But ultimately, if we're effective at designing them and facilitating them, they can be really, really strong ways to help students build their conceptual understandings. Thanks. Happy teaching.